Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous episode of the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities Presents Hometown Haunts. I'm your host, Kat Cloco, and tonight with me, I have Christina Wald and Jen Kohler, like we do every single week. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hey. Uh, just to kick off the show, I want to let everyone know that you can follow us on social media. Please chat with us. We're very talkative. And you can find us at Sin Cabinet Curio on Twitter, Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. I did it again. It's Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram and Cincinnati Curiosities at gmail.com. We will love to hear your ghost stories from wherever in the world you are located. Personal ghost stories are fantastic. I love them. And then we will also read them to other fellow fellow lovers of ghost stories on this podcast also we are an official podcast now we're on itunes and soundcloud Woo! Woo! thank yeah. you jen welcome um, <laughs> yeah, it was quite an endeavor but we are now on itunes and soundcloud and you can find us at cincinnati cabinet of curiosities just look for the glowing green eyes that is our logo right now Mm -hmm. And please rate and review us both on iTunes and on YouTube, where you can see us. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, and so other spooky lovers can find us and also partake of this podcast. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you Yay. for doing that in advance. Yeah, before, before we were talking about this before we started on the air, we also want to wish everyone a happy Trans Awareness Week. We love you. We see you. We will hug you when we can. <laughs> to all of our trans listeners and viewers, hello. We love you. Mwah. <laughs> we want this to be a safe space for everyone. Or a comfortable Definitely. space. Comfy safe space. Safe space is good. I like safe, safe space. Safe space. Okay. Although we can't guarantee a safe space for people from entities, but we can. But no, <laughs> no, we can't guarantee your house won't be haunted or no, you no. won't have some aliens knocking at your door or men in black, but we want you to feel cozy while listening to us. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. happy trans awareness week. Yay. Oh, and yes. cat awareness week too. Right? And cat awareness week. <laughs> <laughs> She's Which, been helping me paint today. Aww. Yeah, it's little paw prints all really over. Do. Yes, I, I, she likes to. Uh, nothing's worse than having to clean up paint from your studio when there's cat footprints all over it. So, yeah, <laughs> that, that's like it. no. It's like water when my dogs get their tail in the watercolor mm -hmm, like paint, mm -hmm. and it splashes everywhere. Wonderful times. Yeah, my cat just ignores me. <laughs> I'm well, that's sorry. Mostly what cats yeah. do, but she's old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I guess so. This week we're talking about dreams. We liked the topic so much last week, and and, um, and our listeners we... love the topic as well. Yeah. Because we got inundated with more dreams. Yeah. After we did the first episode, so thank you all that contributed. Mm -hmm. I also have a strange dream that we can share if we don't have enough time. And we and we're also going to um, let's see we're going to talk dreams this week and um, next week we're going to have a guest on next week is our super size Thanksgiving episode and our tenth episode which is tenth super episode. exciting yes and um, I guess I'll preemptively announce our guest it yes, is friend of the show and friend to the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities comics anthology, James Willis, the author of Weird Ohio, Weird Indiana, and a whole host of Ohio-based ghost books. He is like me. We both write true haunted history books. So we are very excited, nay, jazzed to have James on the show. And he also so. provided a blurb for the back of our comic. So that's he, exciting too. Oh, cool. He did, he did, he did. It's a which, wonderful little blurb. Which <laughs> talking about comics, you know, there's a lot of interest in issue two. Uh, we've talked a little bit about it. We should have our dossiers beginning of January, probably. Yes, I'll, um, I'm, I'll pull together some new stories. I know you have already said, which laid claim to the eight ball of Cincinnati. <laughs> and we have a few other... Uh, Publisher's artists. choice. Publisher's <laughs> choice. So we know who you're doing. Um. <laughs> but but we're hoping that um, you know we get a lot of proposals at the 
probably beginning of February and we'll, you know, go yeah. over that. We'll, we'll talk about it as we, I mean, obviously we haven't sent the first issue out yet, even though it's finished, but you know, we have to think about issue two already. Yeah. It's so, amazing how time gets away from you. Yeah. Solicitations yeah. will open the uh, Corpse Flower Press, which is Christina's publisher company, publishing company. There we go. Yeah, our publishing um, company. Yeah. Ours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do, do we get ownership in this? <laughs> <laughs> okay so oh, you're the editor <laughs> okay wow so i now work for christina um <laughs> <laughs> oh. anyway our publishing company will be coming will open solicitations for stories for uh cincinnati cabinet of curiosities volume two or issue two and we're still working out details but that will be in january Mantis semantics and we are hoping for a diverse line of artists and writers to join us on this very fun project and uh, all about the strange and spooky bits of cincinnati northern kentucky and southern indiana yay <laughs> so the weird triangle speaking of weird <laughs> speaking of weird weird stuff we saw this week yeah christina you're all about the simpsons I know. Well, it was really fun to watch the episode last night. I, I have actually been watching The Simpsons. Now, this will out me in age, but I, I started watching The Simpsons when it first started. Uh, I think the first season was 1990. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, my husband and I have been watching it since it first started. So that, you know, don't do too much math there. But um, anyway. <laughs> I just remember the really janky animation the first season yeah like yeah the pilot it was just like whoa what's going on it was on the tracy ellman show but yes it's yeah. always been I, I think their writer's room has always been a lot of people say oh the simpsons have lost it or or whatever but i actually think the writer's room works really hard i mean we've watched it um every season and you know while they're sometimes like they'll they'll have uneven episodes but sometimes they're spot on with their writing um mm -hmm. and last night they had it on podcasts and they had a parody of my favorite murder yeah um, i saw the easter egg of karen in georgia that's on the wall as a illustration of the two of them on the wall Aww. and i was just like it, i'm like jen and i i don't know christina are you also in the my favorite murderer like i i started groups? listening to it but i think i have to like it looked like if you start with episode one it only plays an hour of each episode which you have to like pay like subscribe to like start at the beginning no, no. it's all on itunes really yeah when i watched it, it like after an hour it stopped and it looked like there was just an hour of the first episode nope they're all up there huh. You yeah. may want to update your iTunes player. Maybe that's yeah. what I know. It was. I, don't know. That, I know my computer will once in a while, and it's not just it, it's any podcast. Mm -hmm. It will just play a certain amount and then stop. But I know because mm. I listen to them when I cook dinner every night that all yeah. the episodes are up on iTunes. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll double check and including the mini update. episodes, the mini sodes. Yeah, because uh, I started listening to it uh, uh, with episode one, but then it didn't play the whole episode, and I thought, well, do I have to pay to listen to this, or, you know, I, I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try. I'm not a fan of true crime stuff. Oh, um, I like. Mean, the... You guys are like, oh. <laughs> what are you doing here? With that? I know. I I mean, you know, I, I some stories I find interesting, but it's not an obsession with me. Yeah. Um, it's interesting whenever they cover anything from our neck of the woods. Um, the, mm -hmm. Right now, I'm also listening to True Crime Garage's uh, series on the I-70 killer. Oh, so, wow. which is interesting because there is uh, a little bit, perhaps, involvement. Because I don't think to this date they have found who that is. And there is maybe a link to him being i think his name his name was herb braumeister of fox hollow farms which is a supremely haunted location in indianapolis but that's it's just speculation at this point but um it's an interesting their their podcast is also quite good and i think we talked about murder squad before the show and mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. we're just but Jen and I are members of the Queen City, City Murderinos. So hello, yeah. Queen City Murderinos. <laughs> well, I'm going I to love that. you. I'm going to give it a try to, to listen to it. But like I said, it's it's. I some sometimes I'll watch you know some true crime stuff. It's it's 
not one of my main go-tos, but that doesn't mean that I actively dislike it. It's just not something I, you know, listen when to. When I had either. TV and cable, I used to fall asleep to Investigation Discovery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People yeah. look at me funny when I say that, but I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. It, Mike isn't huge into true crime either. So I kind of try to limit all my consumption to when I'm alone, like when mm. I'm working on pages, it's really easy when I'm inking pages of comics, it's really easy for me to just power through a bunch of different podcasts. Cause inking is fairly mindless when you do it digitally. Mm -hmm. If you mess up, you're just like, control Z. <laughs> there goes the bad line. It's gone now. <laughs> Oops, I toned the wrong thing. Control Z. It's gone. <laughs> so, Kat, have you ever heard of Karen, Karen's ghost story? I don't uh, think she's ever said it on the podcast. I don't think so. I have not heard it. Okay. Then. She talked about it on another podcast. I will send it to you because it is it is fascinating. Yeah. Cool. And the other <laughs> weird thing that I saw this week is is this thing on the movie The Craft, which I didn't realize that the movie The Craft had like stuff happening on set. Is this and this is the new Craft movie? No, this is the one that the came original out in the one? 90s. Yeah. They said okay. that like uh, and and the, re the reason it caught my eye was because I just watched it like what oh. during Halloween it, it was I was at my mom's house I almost never watched TV like broadcast but she has the TV on when we go over there and and they had it on um, I saw it, you know probably a couple times in the 90s but in some of the scenes like the one where they were calling the four corners on the beach um, mm -hmm. like they said they had some really weird weather occurrences and the park ranger said well that never happens and their fire kept getting put out by the by waves coming and splooshing on them and putting out the um, and they had like a lot of weird electrical problems and that sort of thing so something was dogging the set um, mm -hmm. I have a link to the article here um, and I'll have it in the show notes, but it was interesting that they had, I, I mean, you hear that with movies once in a while, like they'll have strange, I would like to see a movie sometime and, and maybe, uh, one of you guys knows of an example of a movie that wasn't supernatural, that had supernatural occurrences. Three men and a baby. For real? Do you remember in the 80s or early? Yeah, I remember the movie. Late 80s, early 90s. Uh, apparently you can see in a scene someone standing behind a curtain that oh, really? was there yeah that's a filming. cardboard cut out of like Tom Selleck or something was it mm -hmm. yeah but it's in a lot years, of different scenes everybody, of course before the internet too everybody's like oh my god that's that was haunted yeah, <laughs> it's always fun yeah <laughs> I mean there's probably there probably are cases of you know perhaps when people are watching, say, you know, uh, uh, you know, comedy or romance or whatever, they aren't necessarily looking for uh, paranormal stuff and, and don't no. look at it as closely. So maybe that doesn't mean that there isn't, but, you know. I'm Wizard just thinking, also. that one is kind of interesting. Which one is yeah. it? The Wizard of Oz. The ostrich. Oh. What, what happened in Wizard of Oz? Didn't someone die on set or kill themselves on set? And you can really? see so hanging that the the urban legend, just like with the uh, three men and a baby, is that there is a uh, person who committed suicide by hanging themselves in the back of the set. And the way the lighting was done, you can see them swinging in a long shot. And Oof. is it MGM that put out? Um, I think it's MGM that put out. Wizard yeah. of Oz, they claimed that it was actually an ostrich that got loose in the back of the set, and you can see it fling. That's I don't what remember they think any ostriches in the Wizard of Oz, but maybe there is something things. moving behind the set. I don't know if it's a body swinging on a noose or a loose ostrich pooping. I don't know, but Ugh. there's loose something back ostrich. there. That's the Do best you know what explanation it ever. It is the yellow brick road scene where they're going through the forest of okay. trees i believe right after they run into the um tin man okay wow i think that's where it is i'd be have to look at that now yeah I mean, yeah wizard of oz is apparently like a pantheon like you can listen to dark side of the moon by it you could <laughs> i mean apparently people really love this movie <laughs> yeah 
And <laughs> I always liked Just Linda bad. the Good Witch because she had red hair. So yeah, I always mm-hmm. liked her dress. I wanted yeah, her big dress. Yeah, dress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the shoes, of course, the ruby slippers. Yes. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff to appreciate in in, uh, mm-hmm. in it, you know, and it doesn't seem like anyone is, there's actually been some really, I, I noticed <laughs> your, your first weird thing is kind of talking about comics and Kickstarters. There's been a couple really mm-hmm. nicely illustrated um, Oz comics coming out. In the past I was just years. thinking of Disney putting out Return to Oz and the nightmare fuel that sparked the millennial generation. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I watching I that. that oh my goodness i've only seen it once and i i will be honest uh the never ending story freaked me out a whole lot more because oh, i love that movie. book i mean i love that movie <laughs> yeah i love the but, book the movie was okay but the book was so good yeah uh, same with the princess bride i like the book but um anyway so yeah um Wizard of Return to Oz that Disney put out in the 80s, late 80s. It has, mm-hmm. I think, the wheelers, which are these creatures that have wheels for arms and legs, and their oh, helmets wow. are super creepy. I, I have to say, as an adult, I love the costuming of everything <laughs> in this movie, but yeah. the villain has different heads. It's like a body, and she could put different heads on her uh-huh. body. And I'm like, that is brilliant for a scary horror thing, but maybe not a Disney kids movie. So... I thought the room of heads was cool. I thought it was it really was cool creepy, as an cool. adult, but <laughs> as a tiny child, I was just like, what's going I was actually more confused, I think, than scared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, that's a movie I need to rewatch. And also going back to old movies that freaked me out uh, was the medusa the clay animation medusa. Oh, oh yeah clash of the titans yeah. i believe we talked about this the first Very episode awesome. yes yes because you said it was scary you said it was, it scary. was so scary i hid underneath the table and to this day <laughs> claymation now one one movie that supposedly had some paranormal activity to it that i remember seeing in a drive-in was when poltergeist first came out which mm, yeah. uh, i don't know if you you were both probably a little young when it came out but we saw it in the, the- theater and i remember my brother was really nervous I don't yeah. think i existed when it came out yeah. i did i most certainly did i it didn't see it in the theater but i saw it on tv it and there's a scary. whole bunch of through the whole series because with the, the older sister being murdered and then Carol Ann dying, the actress that played Carol Ann. Yeah, that was really tragic. It was. And yeah, there was a lot of urban legends and weird stuff going on around that too. Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that series. But yeah. Yes, I did not exist when Poltergeist came out. <laughs> Sorry, I had to confirm yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think it came out in 80... 82. 82. I, I thought 82, but I was like, I should, I should have, but Troy and I always will try to guess when a movie came out and he's almost always right. And I'm always, always okay. Right. I was four. So I'm sure I didn't see it when it came out. No, <laughs> yeah, we not. saw it. We saw it. Um, it, drive-ins were a thing. So we'd go watch yeah. a couple movies and I I think drive-ins are still a thing. Thanks to COVID. Yes. Yes. Um, but, but back then it was cause I think your parents didn't want to pay for, you know, the busload of kids they had in the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So Craig T. Nelson was on Dax Shepard's podcast, Armchair mm-hmm. Expert, and apparently he was very high during the filming filming of that movie. Really? He doesn't remember most of it. Uh-huh. Well, I think there's many people that don't remember the 70s or 80s, so. Yeah. I just thought, I just thought it was fascinating. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love the movie and I love Craig T. Nelson. He's awesome. <laughs> I've actually never seen the movie. All right, uh, Kat, you want to go on to yours? I should watch it. I know they even remade it with Ryan Reynolds back in 2015. So, yeah. Oh, oops. But you're right. It's still, yeah. Amityville. Yeah, yeah, that's a a strange one. Anyway, so uh, not paranormal news. It was just interesting news that I found. It was comics on Kickstarter have garnered a record 22 million so far in 2020. And I report on this only because we had a comic on Kickstarter that ended November 2nd and we fully funded. So yay us. Yay yay us. Did. Do you think part of that is because there's no conventions? There's really no way to get your comic out this year except Kickstarter and Indiegogo. It could hmm. be that. Um, so 
yeah, basically, not only is Kickstarter up by 30%, but also graphic novel sales are up 42% in the third quarter in 2020 North America. So yeah, it, it's, um, it's an all time high, according to Kickstarter, uh, that it, we've had so much print backed by that particular, uh, I don't want to call it program, but website. Well, I think I think that uh, crowdfunding is kind of an exciting way to, to to publishing because I think there's so many, like, and not just comics, but novels, kids books, any kind of yeah. publishing yeah. that usually you have like a gateway to to publishing, and now you can just have your own audience and sell it to them. I mean, I yeah. think one of the ones in this article, um, you know. Uh, Phil and Kaya Foglio do their girl genius comic and I think it mm -hmm. raised like three hundred thousand dollars and they've been yeah. doing comics for since the early 90s yeah oh, wow and I love how yeah. it encourages new artists to be able to publish their work and get some new blood in mm -hmm. the industry yeah. what were you gonna say Jen I was just gonna ask is there still stigma about self-publishing I mean, it's is waiting. Considered it's disappearing. I don't think it's ever okay. been in comics because I think. Oh, it comics, was in comics. You think so? Because really? I've always oh, thought yeah. comics was was um, mostly self publishing. To be honest, because yeah, I mean, Marvel and DC were always the big players, and to an extent, you have Dark Horse and some of the other ones, uh, but that's such a tiny slice of comics it's sort of like i look at marvel and dc kind of through a lens uh sort of uh when you think of philosophy the shadows on the wall like mm -hmm. like that's that's what you're that's what marvel and dc is but like comics really encompasses such a huge and diverse uh, group of creators in that sort of thing if all you know is marvel and dc you know very little of the pantheon of comics you could be enjoying yeah, well, you're forgetting yeah. about all the syndicated comics, and for a really long time, you couldn't have a strip in anything unless you're part of a syndicate. So that's where a lot mm. of this is stemming from. And okay. getting wide distribution was very rare before even the aughts. I remember back when I started in 05, it was that I... I <laughs> When Tokyo Pop came out with their contest to get new creators, it was one of the very rare contests for new creators in the United States. Um, I know Shonen Jump and Shonen Sunday do it all the time, like they have a few times a year. But um, yeah, it at least from the vantage point I'm at, it, there was a big stigma against self-publishing and it's been disappearing since about 2012 uh, once Kickstarter and Patreon really started getting picking up steam, that really has gone away. But there is definitely in long prose books uh, a yeah. stigma with publishing because usually yeah. when you have a established publisher, that means that you have the ability to get good editors on your work. So yeah. there are a lot of self-published books that are still very good. And I'm not saying not to go to do them, but there still seems to be a bit of a stigma with long form pros. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think thing. things are breaking down as it's you breaking can get down now. fans yeah. on the internet. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like anything with gatekeepers, uh, you know, people, I, I don't think that they, you have, you for years had publishers that, that have operated as gatekeepers and have kind of poo pooed other types of ways to get your, like, for example, fan fiction is a good example. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. You know, I think real traditional publishers kind of poo-pooed it but yet people that read fan fiction probably exceed the amount of people that read novels and buy books oh yeah <laughs> so yeah so it's 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 a marketing myopia at best yeah you know and i think things are changing rapidly yeah um mm -hmm. uh, with uh okay shall we move on to stolen bigfoot yes sure. all right so <laughs> this is from the huffington post stolen bigfoot uh, statue found along road in Santa Cruz County. <laughs> uh, Scotts Valley, California. This is from the Associated Press. Police officers in the mountains north of Santa Cruz responded to a suspicious figure on a roadway earlier Thursday and found Bigfoot. So congratulations, everyone. We have found him. Yay. 
<laughs> he was <laughs> a little banged up, but will be returned to his rightful place at the Bigfoot Discovery Museum, the Scotts Valley Police Department said on a Facebook post. The Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office had urged people to keep an eye their eyes peeled for a four foot tall wooden statue after it was stolen from outside the tiny museum in early nearby felton on monday so bigfoot wasn't missing for very long but he's been he's been found oh that's good and what's yours jen steal bigfoot mine is um weird things you can send uh people to people anonymously basically to seek revenge oh so someone you know makes me mad or <laughs> this, okay, this better so... be better than revenge porn that's all i gotta say oh god no that wasn't even on the list that's that's, that's illegal now you can't do that no that's no, no, good no. i don't i <laughs> want it to be illegal i don't want it don't to happen you take the pictures don't distribute them to anybody yes. mm. even if he is a jerk no one wants to see that Just so if i receive what a, so if we receive so, one of these in the ma- mail We'll yeah. know that Jen sent them. So what are yes. you, what might you send us, Jen? Okay. Um, I can send you poo. An old standard. Yeah. An old standard. I don't know how the, they collect it or whatever, but you can send up to a gallon of poo. <laughs> of um, Or it's a blend of multiple animals. Is that like that zoo poo that's like supposed to be uh-huh. really good for you? Yeah, there's multiple. I yeah. think there's multiple because I may or may not have thought about doing this, but I have never done it. I, Cause you know, karma. Yeah. Just, yeah. So poo was one. This um, uh, mayonnaise is another. So Ew. this is from the observer, observer.com. Mm-hmm. Right. Go. Okay. Weird <laughs> stuff to send to people besides poop. Okay. Poop, glitter, mayonnaise, sweet, sweet, nothing just an empty box or you know so you know oh i got something cool in the mail and then you're oh well that's yep. surprisingly disturbing i like that one i get that a lot from usps <laughs> anyway moving on um prank candles that start off with a sweet scent and then go into something disgusting for example apple pie to dirty fart to dirty fart <laughs> apple pie to a dirty fart Sounds like Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you That's need a so... candle for that? I know. <laughs> I just hang around a dog long enough. <laughs> true. And there is a picture of a kitty. Oh. You can see it. <laughs> oh, is that? I've heard of people that have that before. I'm not laughing at the people. I'm laughing at the image. Yeah, it's weird. I, I can't stop looking at it. Like before. it disturb- disturbs me, but like I'm not afraid of it. But this service will send five carefully selected human trial tripophobic photos. So I guess if that's a real phobia of yours, that would disturb you. You know what would be better is if worms came out of those holes towards your face. <gasps> Well, uh, Fan worms from Beetlejuice. There we go, even better. <laughs> and on that, and on that note, we are going to move over to our main topic tonight, which is mm-hmm. dreams, part two, because we talked about dreams last week as well, and we had so and much fun. We had so much fun. Our listeners absolutely loved it. They sent us more dreams, which is great. And Christina, you actually found an article with the ten most common dreams. Yes, um, this is from, um, I guess it's a dreams website and it's the 10 most common dreams. I'll put a link in the show notes because they have this really nice infographic. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason I thought this was interesting is because we're talking about some dreams um, that a lot of people said that they have. And so they are very common dreams. So um, like the first one is, what does it mean if your teeth fall out in a dream? Which we've had many people say they had that dream. I've had that dream. What does it mean if you're chased in a dream? Which I think I've had that dream too. Have you, have you guys had been chased yeah. in a dream? Yes. Now this one, I don't ever remember having. You can't find a toilet in your dream. Has, has ah! anyone ever had that dream? No. I mean, I've, I've had that reality before. Yeah. But you've you had have, the dream. 
not that I can't find a toilet. It's more that I have to pee and it's because I really have to pee and then I wake up and. Ah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Here it says, when you have a dream where you can't find the toilet, you can relate to something in your waking life where you may be struggling to express your needs in a certain situation. Now, I'm not reading the explanations. I think a lot of times when people try to define what dreams mean, I think that's largely just sort of guessing. Mm, yeah. I mean, you know, it's that's why I think it would be really interesting to do like a database of what people dream and see if there's any sort of trends to what people dream yeah, and, and see I mean, if I, there's some sort of this may be what this is though yeah yes that's I true i can interpret my own dreams i can always relate them to what's going on in my life at the time and we were talking about what does being naked in a dream mean so that's mm. the fourth uh the fifth is what does it mean if you feel unprepared for an exam in your dream which that was a very common one um what does it mean to fly in your dream and falling in a dream what does it mean and do uh, you die? Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had all, I've had all of these dreams, really, except for the toilet one. Um, what does it mean mm -hmm. to crash a vehicle in your dream? What does it mean to find an unused room in your dream? Which was, I was talking about the architectural mm -hmm. dreams. Yeah. And what does it mean to be late in your dream? Which I don't know if I've had dreams about being late. More, uh, the I, I kind of put that in maybe with the exam dream. Uh, exam dream. Yeah. I'm surprised zombies aren't in there. Yeah. Well, maybe that would be in the chased, like when you're being chased. Maybe. That seems like that would be, does it mention zombies here? Um, it says running away from something or someone that is chasing you in your dream suggests that you are running away from something that is causing you fear or an anxiety in your waking life. Hmm. Hmm. Which perhaps, you know, it, that's one thing that this kind of segues into this art, other article that I will also link that was on Boing Boing Today, actually, serendipitously. Hmm. Um, and it was uh, the new theory of why our dreams are so weird. And, you know, talking about, say, the Turing test, if anyone watched Blade Runner, um, they think that they found when they train AI that you have to have situations what do they call it? It's overfitting where there's other things in a situation that have nothing to do with problem solving, that that works in making AI more able to discern situations. And they mm. think that might also be what dreams are, that it's, it says, as whole notes, when computer scientists are training a neural net, basically trying to learn something, they run into the problem of overfitting. That's when you're training your neural network on a bunch of example data and it finds the perfect trend line and precisely of that pile of data but only that pile of data it's useless from protecting trend lines and new batches of that data so they're saying that actually if you dream they've done studies and they found that if you uh if you dream at night that you're better at problem solving during the day and learning things and paying attention and so people that have interrupted sleep or that don't have dreams have more difficulty learning new things and problem solving. That's not well, I'm host. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just thinking that that you had said that that so so, so I, I think that's why quality sleep is considered so important and why people strive yeah. for it because it does sort of add up. It seems to be some sort of uh, I mean obviously the idea that all creatures spend half of their life doing it, it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um you know so you can't i mean it is a huge source of inspiration um for artists and for um anyone stories like we talked about inventions sometimes you're problem solving a lot of times like if i'm working on paintings sometimes i'll dream about them and how to fix them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about sleeping on it yeah. um yeah and i you know it's just really a fascinating idea. So it also made me think of where you said Blade Runner do uh, androids dream of electric sheep. So that yeah. kind of, uh, you know, Philip K. Dick talked about that already. So this sounds like it's the same thing. Like, how do you get AI to think, to think? Mm -hmm. And, and I say a lot of that depends on if you, how you think human brains work. And a lot of people have different opinions about that. You know, is it a receiver or is it a hard drive? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Or is this all a simulation that we don't exist at all? Well, I mean, what is existence? <laughs> I know. 
I mean, oh no, oh no, we're being sucked down a, a rabbit hole of wonder. <laughs> Uh, but we had talked about, and I don't think we were online before, um, but when we talked about, um, you said you had, didn't you say you had had dreams talking to relatives before? Did we? we yeah. So I, <laughs> did we talk about this when we were recording? No, we weren't recording. Yeah. So um, I noticed at Halloween this year, a number like, was it you, Christina and I both had mm-hmm. dreams that involved deceased loved ones. And mine actually was on the early, was that during the early hours of Halloween. So you're looking at 2 a.m. on Halloween day. And I woke up that morning and went, wow, why was my deceased relative in my dream? And I kind of looked at the date on my watch and went, oh, that makes sense now. Because it's believed that the veil thins during this time. And that's why we have uh, Halloween and Salwen and Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. And it would make sense. It would be the most appropriate day for family members to come through in dreams. And in my dream, it was just me and the family member just talking about the family that was still alive and what was going on and just kind of chatting and catching up with one another. So it was just very profound because I was just like, I haven't had a dream with them in it ever. Have they popped up during Thanksgiving dinner? Yes, that has happened, but I've never had a dream with them in it. Mm-hmm. How about you, Christina? Well, uh, yeah, and I was talking about that I had a dream and it would have been actually uh, November 1st because it was that night. And, um, you know, my, my father passed away back in June and I had a dream that I was talking to him and his father was there and was very angry about something but I don't remember what the discussion was about or why he was angry Hmm. and when you had said it was Halloween I was like well not only was that the day of the dead but that was also my dad's birthday oh wow yeah but I don't remember what we talked about at all but all I remember was that his father his father was there it would have been my grandfather and that he was angry about something but I don't know what it was wow did you have anything jen we both have both recently lost parents so yeah yeah so my dad died when i was 16 and my parents divorced when i was three so when he died i had a lot of dreams of him abandoning me Hmm. so like one that i used to have and this was recurring also of us we were at a at the mall in the parking lot going to the car and he kept walking faster and further and further in front of me and I kept yelling at him and running after him dad 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 come back you know mm. and it was him leaving me basically and that is definitely a feeling of abandonment mm-hmm. um and that kind of recurred up into my 20s and I had some other dreams I remember having one dream of him sitting in his his house that he lived in before he, or when he died and it was empty and he was sitting in the sunlight, like in that really pretty golden five o'clock in the evening night light. And I just went up to him and hugged him and basically said goodbye. And that was in my 20s after college. Yeah. And then my mom died in June this year. And I've been having a lot of dreams of her, mainly... <laughs> And I kind of feel like maybe she's just checking in to see how things are going and I'm yelling at her in my dream. Mm. I know that sounds awful, but we had a difficult relationship, but in lots of family drama, but I was yelling at her, telling her everything that was going on in the aftermath of her death. And she just kind of, she just sits there and listens. And then the last dream I had of her was she came back to tell me that heaven was real and hell is real and how you get into heaven it doesn't matter what religion you are it's based on how good of a person you were that and that's what that was the last dream i had of her which when was that you know yeah when was that uh a few weeks ago a month ago it wasn't on halloween but um yeah, like I never talked to my mom about heaven and hell. Hmm. We talked about reincarnation a lot. So that, Buddhist, that, right? I was yeah, a little weirded out about that one. I'm like, she, all right. She, she was Buddhist, right? 
Yeah, but she was raised Catholic. Okay, okay. So, and <laughs> my grandma, I asked her once, I said, because I knew grandma, stout believer in Catholicism, and I said, do you think mom's going to go to hell? And she point blank said yes your mom's gonna go to hell because yeah, that's what they you know like. and i'm like okay <laughs> so maybe it's that you know and i'm like mm-hmm. I, you know my mom suffered a lot with her illness and i kind of feel i'm i'm hoping i think maybe it's stupid because i don't necessarily believe in catholicism and heaven and hell and all that but it, it is a nice comforting thought to think that she's happy she's not suffering she's breathing on her own again she can she's up there smoking her ass off she can smoke her ass off without getting sick yeah you know um the, i mean so that i think maybe that's just a nice comforting thought knowing that she's because i i asked my friend who said she um she could kind of tell when my mom was dying mm-hmm. and i said well when you came to, to the funeral i said did you see her did did she come in and she's just like she came in for a little bit kind of looks around rolled her eyes and left which totally fits my mom because before she died she's like i'm gonna i don't care about the funeral that's for you i'm dead i'm gone i don't care mm-hmm. you know so she's like so they're doing it <clears throat> huh i said so she said so they're doing it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 did either of you watch The Good Place? I did. Yes. Because that yes, had some really good. interesting philosophical implications about, um, I don't know if it's spoilery, spoilery, but it was very philosophical in its resolution. And, you yes. know, there's been many writings about that. Like, what would heaven actually mean? Like, if you're in a situation where you have everything that you want, are you truly happy? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah people write more about agony than they do about oh that ice cream was really good you know yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well because of that show and mm-hmm. supernatural and how they how supernatural portray, portrays heaven and hell and everything it i think about it i think about it every once in a while i'm like huh, that that would be nice to have like your own personal heaven where you could can be happy in your own little bubble right mm-hmm. and then you pop in and see your loved ones whenever I mean, Wasn't there a Robin Williams movie about that? Oh, um, what dreams may come. May come. That's what yeah. it was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That one was trippy, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it just—I guess it's something that's. I think about everyone, so especially after the Good Place. Watching yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That was a really good way of tying up that series. Yeah. And yeah. making like a statement at the same time. Well, I thought it was very interesting philosophically because when mm-hmm. you think about it, you know, how people live life and enjoy themselves, like there's people that no matter what they have, if you, it, even if they feel like all of their parameters are there, they, they still want some sort of conflict there. And perhaps that's just the way we're designed. I mean, that actually makes an argument for you being in some sort of video game because if you don't have problems to solve you don't want to do anything like yeah probably without problem solving or some sort of conflict in your life then what are you doing you know Mm -hmm. and you just yeah you know or do nothing i mean Mm -hmm. and and i think there's something to that you know and and maybe we've only scored like four percent (laughs) but well you can't you can't learn and grow from a place of comfort true no true well, and that's why, you know, when you read great tomes in literature, like I said, they're not usually about constant happiness. No. <laughs> no, no one would read it's it. It's the pursuit know? of it. Yeah. yeah. If, you if need that constant a, a diary tension sort of thing. Today we had ice cream and had a, you know, it's like, you know, that would be. Well, no and how boring. It would be very boring. That. But if, yeah. if, if the story was today we had ice cream and then a meteor fell out of the sky and half the world died, then people are like, well, now this is an interesting story. You know, I mean. Yeah, that that it it's just one of the staples of writing. You have to have that tension and release. It doesn't matter if you're doing horror or comedy or romance. It's that constant spring of tension and release that you need right. to keep your stories interesting. So, right. yeah. And this Boing Boing article points out that 
um, they don't know why people like to read fiction. Why would you like to read something that's not real? And they think that that plays into this, you know, thirst for, you know, or, or thirst for dreams, but sort of the... That whimsy that you need. Yes. I mean, yeah. it, it, it perhaps takes takes place of conflict that may not happen in your daily life when perhaps when people are earlier like hunting animals and you know in little tents and stuff it's that escapism that everyone needs that reminds me of a situation that i ran into back in the early days of working on comics i had somebody go well comics aren't necessary like it's not a necessary job and i'm like well that's true but it's what people do to work and then they use this to escape their working. So me entertaining you actually is necessary for the benefit of everyone because you need to be able to release just whatever stress you have. 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's a better quote, but it's, it's escaping me right now, basically, that mm-hmm. people work, what was it? People work to eat and then people work to oh man i'm butchering it there was a similar one that winston churchill said about what are we fighting for if it's not the arts now i know winston churchill was not exactly a role model or a very good person kind of an imperialist but he did like art um (laughs) but he does not like pigeons yeah so i just listened to a podcast talking about like sort of what an imperialist he was and you couldn't really find a lot of fault with it and Hmm. You know. I was going to say right now, if anything, is telling us how important entertainment is. Because yeah. Graphic novel sales are up. Exactly. That, watch, binge watching, watch, re-watching your old shows for the escapism and that, that feeling and the comfort. Of, of comfort. Yeah. I mean, imagine if we didn't have Netflix right now Who and you were stuck at home. Ooh. Like, what, Ooh. What, do you, what did they do during the Spanish flu? Like, uh, they read a lot of books. <laughs> Wait, which actually, people used to say books were bad for your brain. So whatever people yeah. like, <laughs> usually, usually somebody finds sinful. And before yeah. that, it was newspapers. Right. It, it, mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. been constant. So yeah. yes, yes. So um, I guess before we get too far, we should uh, read more listener dreams. Uh, yes, do let's do that. Oh yes, um, I'm, I'm not going to read all of hers. I'm going to just read the snow dream here uh and and Rhonda um, okay. is a painter and she's been doing like a dream painting series which is really cool like does dream sketchbooks and stuff like that uh and so I asked her what her snow dream was and she said um I was I was in my childhood house and I remember looking out of the living room windows it was snowing and there was at least an inch of accumulation on the ground I woke up and the scene from my bedroom window in Mill Vale looked exactly as it does in winter. Slowly the illusion faded and as I blinked and I remembered that it was June. Every summer early on, I have what I call the snow dream. The dream is winter and when I wake up and see outside my rear window, I see it is snowy outside. It is a very convincing illusion and it takes a minute to see if it lifted. It is a strange half asleep experience. It happened every single year as long as I can remember. I know it always happens on the same day. Or even if the same dream involves winter in my childhood home. I do not know, but it always occurs when it's hot and impossible for snow. Which is, is an interesting uh, recurring dream. And, mm-hmm. and um, interesting to be confused about what you're waking up in, too. Um, have you guys ever woken up and been confused where you are? Like your dream was so convincing? You were... Yeah, I, I know. Not... Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the podcast or not, but I'll wake up from zombie dreams thinking that our house is under attack and then dart for the window to look outside and see absolutely nothing. Maybe a rogue possum. And just the relief from knowing that zombies aren't real. Mm-hmm. Yet. Mm-hmm. Yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. 2020 is not done yet. Who knows? And I, I have woken on. myself up screaming. Oh, that is scary what happened don't know this this last one i was yelling at someone and i woke up for a brief second and then went back to sleep other times i've woken up thinking someone was in the room or i've had a spider on my face and i jolt out of bed and i'm like this (laughs) 
Now that's a scary. Most people yeah. don't like like spider. I I don't mind spiders, but the idea of one crawling on your face is somewhat no giant. That like that, that has happened to me. But yeah, with a cockroach. <gasps> I used to have those as a kid. <sighs> yes, Ew. but you're saying it really happened. <laughs> to me, it happened with the cockroach. To her, it was a spider alien or alien spider dream. Yeah, it was gross. It was super gross. And then the other one she had here, I'm, I'm um, that Jen I is slowly dying on the other camera. Uh, well, she says she has a recurring dream character, which is an angel with gray wings. His name is Azrael, and he is very interesting. I may do a painting of him, um, which oh. I think is interesting. Has anyone had a recurring character that is in their dreams? I don't. I can't ever think of having one. My vampire. That's Say right. You have a vampire. It's all. He was always a guy, tall, pale, short black hair, mm-hmm. thin. Yeah. <laughs> you getting steamy over there? <laughs> no, because I was nine when I was having the dream. <laughs> the way you sighed and bit your lip, it looked like you're like oh, so tall, well, short, that dark hair. Right. I have dreams mm. about him all the time, and that he's my boyfriend. Not true, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we didn't. We didn't. No one. No one seems to reveal those sorts of dreams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My recurring, <laughs> recurring character would be Sailor Moon, if anything. That and the zombies. So this makes for some interesting dream fodder. <laughs> uh, Sailor Moon. Everybody was doing their Sailor Moon portraits. You should do one of her as a zombie. I don't Ooh. want to do that. I like Sailor Moon too much <laughs> to do that to her. No. So we've got a we've got we've got a couple other ones to read. Do you want to read the next one, um, Kat? Bills? Yes. Alrighty. So Bill. The building I was in was occupied by a cult. The elevator stopped between floors, and when the doors opened, it exposed a narrow dark wood stairs that would lead to secret rooms for the art and mind control practice. Dream or MK Ultra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, Bill. <laughs> There'd be lost time incidences. Yeah. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of cult stuff lately. That that No. That stuff is messed up. <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to some stuff about some Mexican cults, so that uh... stuff is dark. Well, I, I, do you think that, that that sort of thing comes from sort of when you don't have a family structure around you, like it, it replaces that need and that's why people are so loyal to them? I mean, is uh, there a certain profile of people that are interested in cults? or I think it? there's a certain profile of people that um, would be interested in cults, maybe slightly more susceptible. That would be a great question for a psychiatrist yeah i wouldn't even know i mean because i've just i mean i'm just started delving into it because i've been deep diving into the the murder now i'm kind of going ever since the nexium thing i've been going in read watching some stuff and it's mm-hmm. just i don't they're con artists like i really don't know yeah how you it's like any of the MLMs, which seem to be really, really mellow cults, where um, they're just trying to get people that need community of some sort and right. just seem to be hurting. And mm-hmm. at different levels, different cults will and the, fix and it, different needs. It could be a yeah. whole different uh, political discussion, but I, I think that one thing in current society that people are searching for is community mm-hmm. i think that there's a lot even though we're connected more than ever before in a lot of ways we aren't connected mm-hmm. you know there a lot right. of structures that people used to uh be a part of are not as interesting anymore and perhaps that's because uh being able to communicate with friends online or or zoom or whatever but like a lot of fraternal organizations for example like you know the elk club or the masons Masons. or whatever yeah they don't have as big a or even the girl scouts like they're getting dwindling membership and i think a lot of it is because people have like this world of entertainment and youtube so why do you need to 
You know what I mean? It's There's also of... a lot of hanky panky that happened in some of these organizations that have true, driven true. people's trust. Just not Girl it. Scouts, but not Girl Scouts, <laughs> Boy Scouts. Now we know We're looking at you, Boy Scouts, but <laughs> in the in some other stories, but but, but yeah, I think and also thing. Bills is that room thing too, yeah, where it is, it is. where the you were talking room. about the hidden rooms. So and, and uh, do you want to? Undies, Jen. I thought that one was sure. interesting too. Uh, last night, I dreamed that I had on the most absurdly heavy face mask and that someone stole the mirror to my dresser through the window of my childhood home, but in my current house. That's hmm. an interesting one. Yeah. Because um, it combines a yeah. couple things like nostalgia. Mm-hmm, and what uh-huh. does a mirror usually represent in sort of, I mean, that could be so many things um, to different worlds. Like maybe it means a world change. Like mm-hmm. if someone stole your mirror, could that mean they've stolen an access to? Or maybe a viewpoint has changed in the world too. Mm, yeah. True, yeah. True. Well, and she's wearing a heavy face mask. If this is a recent one, I'm I'm saying COVID all over this one. Like yeah, having to yeah, wear this masks. Is one of those COVID <laughs> dreams, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So shall oh, I read? My friend, yeah, you can read Jim's. This one was scary. Okay. So this is from Jim. I had a terrifying dream the other night where I was brazenly challenging a mischievous, annoying ghost to appear, and it did, in a menacing fashion. I woke up terrified, sweating, and with my heart racing. Yikes. That does sound really scary. (laughs) Congratulations, Jim. You are now possessed. (laughs) Oh, no. Is that what that usually means? No, I'm being funny. (laughs) No. (laughs) Okay. Jim, if you're listening, she doesn't really think you're possessed. I'm a very sarcastic person. That was sarcasm. Fine. You're fine, dude. We you're fine. That, we need that graphic. Everything's this is fine. Fine, everything's fine. Don't panic. Are you sure? Are you sure? It's time to panic, right? No. All Just right. Grab your towel. I'll read Margaret's. It says, I have weird dreams about my city. There's one amazing library on a hill an interdimensional portal on another there's and then there's one where there's a british refugee women and local women fought off a japanese invasion in world war ii and one is is 15 is eight lanes wide each way and follows the waterfront interesting i've I've seen i've had dreams like that too where something is like more fantastical than it is in real life yeah Uh, i did Mm -hmm. a sketch of a dream and and maybe i'll post it uh, where there was like an amusement park running through Cincinnati and like there was ro- roller coasters going through like the Macy's building. and Oh, man, oh, they cool. make commute so fun. I know, what I is? know. I was like, why doesn't this exist? The ultimate right? street car. I know. I mean, why haven't they integrated these things before? I know, right? Safety. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They, they missed of, an opportunity there. They really it's did. like a mixture of Futurama and Cincinnati. Kings Island brings you the Cincinnati street car. <laughs> And uh, the last one I have here, uh, do you want to read it, Kat? Uh, From Canada? Canada? Oh, we have there's Canada more, and there's Katie. So yeah, which so would you? Uh, I can do Canada. And, okay, and then you, you can read you Katie. You do Canada. <laughs> you do Canada. Jen does Canada. Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Brought to you by the streetcar. <laughs> I'm not your buddy, guy. Okay. <clears throat> In the dream, there were rows and rows of machinery in the sub-basement I had n- hadn't known existed. And between each row, there were columns of flames. And I couldn't tell whether they were supposed to be there or not. When I tried to close the door, I opened. Instead, it flew off its hinges and landed across the basement. Wow. Hmm. That's pretty intense, too. I kind of got a Terminator 2 vibe from that. Yeah. I was thinking uh, Freddy Krueger. Or Freddy Krueger, yeah. Uh Flames, basements, machinery. Yeah. Kind of, I mean, I'm sure whoever wrote Freddy Krueger probably based certain things on, you know, dreamscape. Oh, yeah. 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 And do you want to read Katie's? Okay. So, Katie, trying to find my dorm in a massive building before college starts, and my parents will leave until we do. But also, they keep distracting me. Also, I'm still my current age, and the building is full of former co-workers and derby people. 
So, it's, so it's I guess in roller derby. Yes. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> and and that's the end. Uh, Kate, that's the Kate, end of the dream. That would be a fun dorm to live in. <laughs> that would be a fun dorm to live in. Probably much in more fun than the dorm. Your rink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your rink. Yeah, I, I it's mean, the common I, area. I, I think it's common in dreams for people to mix that would never mix in real life, just because oh, they're yeah. in your head. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and it, it's it's always pretty random who shows up in dreams. Yes. You know. I have a certain Korean pop and drama star that keeps popping up too. Ooh, <laughs> so, nice. I'm just like, what are you doing here? You're not Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that what you say in there? See, you know, this is all great fodder for comics. I know it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, so I, I, pr- I predict a future issue of Cabinet of Curiosities about with a dream yeah, maybe. Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, that could be like that. Seems like it should be a, an additional issue. Okay. All right. So, thank you everyone for joining us for this second uh, installment of Dreams for the Cincinnati Cabinet of Curiosities. I'm Cat Cloco. Along with me is Jen and Christina, and you can follow us at Cincy Curiosity. Cincy Cabinet of Curiosities on Instagram and email us your ghost stories to cincycuriosities at gmail.com. Thank you and keep it spooky. Yay!